Hi guys, my name is Ms. Muhammad and I am the sixth grade ELA and social studies teacher at Cypress Point Elementary School. And today we are going to continue our lesson for Hatchet, a Gary Paulson novel. So today uh, we'll talk about you have spent um, time reading the first four chapters and learning how Brian responds to the crash and you wrote claims that are supported by text evidence. So today we are going to continue practicing um, gathering text evidence um, from chapter five. We're going to discuss specific words in the chapter that helps us to understand what Brian is learning about survival. And we're going to write a reflection um, on, our, on how Brian is changing in our reading journal handout. So you are going to need a copy of Hatchet. Now I have a couple of, I have two books. I have the actual novel for which, you know, we put our sticky notes on the inside. And I also have the printout copy. Now if you have the printout, it is just as good. This way you can actually write on the copy and I'm sure your teacher isn't going to mind you writing on it, underlining, maybe even highlighting. But if you have the book, then it's a pretty good idea that you go ahead and stick your sticky notes on the inside. Okay? So you're going to need 10 sticky notes, maybe more, and you're going to need your reading journal handout sheet. Okay? So, we are going to read, or I'm going to read along, and you're going to read along with me, uh, an excerpt from chapter five. Now, when we're finished reading and we finish our lesson for today, you're going to go ahead and finish reading the entire chapter. As we go on in the next couple of lessons, we're going to be doing a lot of referencing back and forth to, uh, in chapter five, so you want to make sure you've read it, okay? So while we're reading, I want you to think about this question. What is Brian learning about survival? There's a lot he's going to learn throughout this text. Okay? So as you read, we will annotate, we'll make annotations on our sticky notes, and we will, as we notice in the text, what are some of the things that are helping him in, you know, while he's uh, trying to figure out how he's going to get out of this situation. Okay? So this is chapter five. This is the first excerpt. It's from the first part of the chapter. So I'm going to read some of that to you. So just follow along. His eyes snapped open, hammered open. There were things, there were these things about himself that he knew instantly. He was unbelievably viciously thirsty. His mouth was dry and tasted foul and sticky. His lips were cracked and felt as if they were bleeding. And if he didn't get something to drink, he felt as though he was going to die, wither up and die. Lots of water, all the water he could find. He knew the thirst and felt the burn on his face. It was mid afternoon and the sun had come over him and cooked him while he slept and his face was on fire. Wood blister, wood peel which did not help the thirst, made it much worse. He stood using the tree to pull himself up because there was still some pain and stiffness. He looked down at the lake. It was water. Oh, this is just great. He knew if I just could get some water, but he didn't know if he could drink lake water. Nobody, nobody had ever told him if he could or could not drink lake. There was also the thought of the pilot. Oh, that poor guy down in the blue with the plane strapped in the body. Oh, awful, he thought. But the lake was blue and wet looking and his mouth and throat raged with the thirst and he did not know where there might be another form of water that he could drink. Okay, so we're going to stop right there, take a little pause, 
And let's think about what we've learned so far in that small paragraph. That's quite a bit, actually. And if you have your post-it notes, this is a good time to start jotting down maybe one or two things that we learn. We'll just, we'll work on one first, okay? So the first one, Brian's actions. Brian's actions, okay? So, Brian, he stood. Now there's something about the text that helps us to know that this was his action. What are those what are those words in the, in the text that we know that show action? Verbs, actually, that's right. Verbs show action. So it says, he stood using the tree to pull himself up because there was still some pain and much stiffness. And he looked down at the lake. Okay, so that's the first one. Okay, let's look back at the text. And look at the next one, it says, I'm going to check my notes, okay. So it says, um, it was, let me start down at the bottom, it says, but he did not know if he could drink it. Nobody had ever told him if he could or could not drink lakes. There was also the thought of the pilot down in the blue with the plane, strapped in the body. Awful, he thought. Now that is explicit. You know, when we say something is explicit, it tells you right away exactly what it is. So if we look at this one and we said, okay, so we need to annotate. Remember at the beginning, we were annot annotating his thoughts, his actions, and his words. So if we look at this one, Those are his thoughts, but he did not know if he could drink it. Nobody had ever told him if he could or could not drink lakes. There was also the thought of the pilot, the word thought there, he's thinking, down in the blue with the, with the plane, strapped in, poor guy, awful, he thought, okay? So let's take a look at what we've done so far. We've got actions, We've got uh, thoughts. We've got one more. Words. Now, throughout the text, Brian does talk. Now, of course, we know he's all alone, so he's basically talking to himself. So I wanted to read to you in the text the section where he actually utters words. And it comes to a, somewhat of a shock to him because he's actually, he doesn't really realize, you know, he, that he's by himself. He knows that he's alone. But when he hears the sounds coming from himself, it shocks him a little bit. Okay. And this is still in chapter five. And he said, so he almost jumped with the word spoken aloud. It seemed so out of place, the sound. He tried it again. So, so, so here I am. He's realizing that he is actually alone and the words are coming out. So that would be a great place to put an annotation in your note, in your sticky notes. There's one more that I thought was really interesting because it deals with him being able to um, deal with some of the things, issues that he's having at this time. You know, he's got to have water. And of course, there are other things that he has to have. He has to have what else? We usually have to have something over ourselves when we're out in the wilderness. He's got to have shelter. So he's thinking about water. He's probably going to start thinking about shelter. And then, probably the most important, he's going to think about food. And he says in chapter... Also in chapter five, you're going to read, it says, Brian looked around again. I wish you were here, Herpich. He's talking about his teacher. I'm hungry and I trade everything I have for a hamburger. Do you eat hamburgers? <laughs> I'm hungry, he said. He said it loud. In, norm in a normal tone at first, then louder, then louder until he was almost yelling it. He says, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. 
And you know, when you're looking at text like that, it usually ends with an exclamation point. So we know that he is definitely speaking loud in the text. Okay? All right, very good. So now we're going to switch a little bit because, you know, at the beginning of this chapter or this lesson, we talked about the characterization and we're also going to do some word study. So let's look at some excerpts from the text and look at how Gary Paulson, the author, uses words to convey how Brian is faring or how he's dealing with his situation. Okay? Okay, so now, in the text, it talks about, or, or the author talks about, um, Brian reflecting on the lesson that his teacher, Mr. Perpich, used to teach. So he says in the text, quote, Brian had once had a teacher, an English teacher, a guy named Perpich, who was always talking about being positive, thinking positive, staying on top of things. That's how Perpich put it. Well, that's a tongue twister. Perpich put it. <laughs> stay positive, stay on top of things. Brian thought of him now, wondering how to stay positive and stay on top of this. All Perpich would say is that I have to get motivated. He was always telling us kids to get motivated. Brian changed positions. So he was sitting on his knees. He reached into his pocket and took out everything he had and laid it on the grass in front of him. Now, I was thinking, if I was Brian, I would have to, there would be a lot of things I wish I had. But in the text, it talks about Brian having some specific things. So I thought it'd be a good idea to pull those out so we can actually look and see what he had. We keep going. So he said, um, let me back up. He reached into his pocket and took out everything he had and laid it on, laid it on the grass in front of him. It was pitiful enough. A quarter, three dimes, a nickel, and two pennies, a fingernail clipper, a bill fold with a $20 bill. In case you get, and quote, this came from his mom, in case you get stranded at the airport in some small town and have to buy food, his mother had, mother had said, and some odd pieces of paper. Well, that was all he had in his pocket. Okay? What does staying on top of things mean in this excerpt? So when I read that, it made me think about, you know, we usually say things like, oh, I've got to really stay on top of that. You might think about, oh, I've got to do my homework. Oh, I've got to stay on top of an assignment that is due. I have to stay on top of my chores or I won't be able to get those wonderful things that mom or dad or whoever you live with might give you for doing your work. So that's what I was thinking when I read those, that phrase, stay on top of things. Here's another excerpt. It says, he frowned. No, wait. If he was going to play the game, might as well play it right. Perpich would tell him to quit messing around. Get motivated. Look at all of it, Robeson. What does play the game mean? Well, we know he's not really playing any games. So what does it mean? My thought is that he needs to figure out how he was going to survive. And he had to look at all that he had. Oh, by the way, he did have a very important piece. His good old fashioned hatchet that his mom had given him. So that might help him. We'll see. Okay. Now, we've looked at word study. We've looked at the um, word, we've looked at most of the text for, for chapter five. So you'll have an opportunity to do some reading and finish up the text. So while you're doing that, the, your assignment is to respond in your reading journal handout. And here are the questions that you're going to look at. What did Brian's English teacher Perpich teach him? 
And how does Brian use this lesson to help respond? These lessons to help, uh, or this lesson to help him to, to respond to the crash. So while I thought about it, I did a little research for myself. I did a, did, did a little um, writing for myself. And so I thought maybe this might help you when you get ready to do your assignment. This is just an example. So to answer the first question, Brian's English teacher, Mr. Perpich, taught him to stay positive and stay on top of things and to do and to stay motivated. Okay. So the second question is a little more detailed. So when we have information, evidence from the text, now you know you took all of those annotations. So this would help us with our second question. It says, Brian tries to use this lesson throughout chapter five after, after he first remembers the lessons. You know, he reflected on it. He focuses on taking stock of the supplies. He looked at what he had. And then he pushes himself to really consider everything and how might these things be helpful. When Brian remembers that the, flu, the plane flew off course after the pilot had a heart attack, he realizes that, you know, he might not be rescued right away. So this meant that he was going to have to have some, uh, make some shelter and he was going to have to find some food. After he reminds himself of this, he is ready to take action. All right, so this concludes our first lesson for re lesson number six. So now, in this lesson, let's recall, we learned how Brian uses the lesson of positive thinking to fight the panic that he's going to have during or after this crash. Then we practiced uh, remembering how to do our annotations. So I'll see you next lesson.